the formidable robot. On January 14, 2004, a new post was uploaded on a website that was abandoned for 14 years. The next post was for the Toonami re-airings of G.I. Joe, the original 1980s cartoon from Toei Animation. Here was the post in its entirety, archived by robust bums. G.I. Joe, Countdown. Hello, we meet once again. After watching that chilling SpongeBob tape last night, I went for the next VHS tape in the lot I picked up, Toons 2. I should have mentioned that each tape was marked with a number for each cartoon. Guess it's to let people know these are cartoons. I inserted the tape. It started instantly with a disclaimer that read as followed. What you're about to watch is an entire episode locked from both Hasbro and Adult Swim's vault. The episode was lost to time and later found. The episode was supposed to be the sixth episode of season one. For now, we introduce to the audience, Countdown. The episode started normally with the intro when I noticed something off. Duke wasn't present which set off some red flags. The episode's title card was shown, Countdown. It started with Snake Eyes, dying over what looked like a base being run by Cobra Commander. He was ordering guards to set bombs over what looked like nuclear weapons. Duke suddenly came out of nowhere, stumbling. Cobra looked over. Yo. His voice was a lot raspier, almost like a cobra. Attack. The frame stuck with Cobra pointing at something with the sky being crimson red. What was on was that the frame looked like if Cobra's model was floating, which could be counted as an animation error. Another number station was heard with that same monotone male voice. One, one, two, zero, one, nine, eight, six, six, zero, zero, eight, six. November 20th, 1986, 686. The date and production code of the final episode of the series, Into Your Tent I Will Silently Creep. A lot of these number station codes sound like they're specifically from an episode or from a company. We've got a problem! Duke screamed. The episode is moving along like nothing happened. Duke! Duke! We'll send in the helicopters! Scarlet was heard on the walkie-talkie. We'll be there as soon- <laughs> I heard what sounded like an electric zap. The tape suddenly stopped. I panicked. I ran over and quickly pulled out the tape. A roaring fire was already sparked in the VCR. I ran to the nearest bathroom and doused the player in water. As much as that was dangerous, the VCR was fried beyond repair. Even some buddies of mine couldn't understand why it caught on fire. After $50 spent on eBay for another VCR, I hesitantly put the tape back in. There was a voice. It sounded like a weirdly pitched robot. Ironically, it was a mix of two computer voices you've heard on an old Macintosh. It was Bells and Trinoids. I'm sorry I have to interrupt this video, but you should know that it's technologically impossible to mix both Mac voices into one voice, maybe through deepfake or any sort of software and plug in to merge both voices. My best guess is that the offer is trying to screw with me, by making their future creepypastas more harder to read or piece together. I don't find it a problem, but the writer here still needs to improve on the grammar and punctuation structuring, and make their future stories less difficult to narrate. Anyway, laziness aside, I made the two voices say each line from the so-called dialogue. Let's go back to the video. It said this. Your childhood dead. Your past, a mystery. Do you see the mistakes beyond your recognition? Do you sense the future ahead? Or do you feel the mice of life strangling? Your judgment day is approaching. The tape suddenly stopped. I was able to pull out the tape. It had some imperfections from the fire on the other VCR, but it wasn't too much of a hassle to fix with some duct tape. One more tape left, but, I must ask. If this story gets popular, should I go over three more? If that's the case, I'll check the three other ones. For now, I'm gonna go to bed before any more incidents like that fire happen. <laughs>